Good afternoon and uh, welcome back to the Azapo Online Political Education Platform. Uh, it is uh, great to be here after the election encounter that the country uh, was uh, participating in in the last uh, couple of days. And as you would recall, um, you know, everyone was so focused uh, on the local government elections in South Africa on the 1st of November. And uh, this is ready to <clears throat> welcome you back uh, to this um, Azapo Online Political Education Platform where we allow ideas to melt and uh, we attempt to educate uh, so that uh, people can be liberated. This is a platform where we educate for liberation and uh, welcome to all of you who are connected from the various uh, countries where you are and um, special welcome to my guests. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, today I have uh, Comrade Kurufero Mashabela, Comrade Kekele Tsohena, and Comrade uh, Chris Swepu. And uh, these comrades uh, really need no introduction to you. Uh, they are, you know, um, members of the Azanian People's Organization. And, uh, you know, when I issued an invite to them to come and reflect, on um, you know Azapo's uh, election performance and um, Azapo's um, uh, views on what they saw in the past elections, and you know just also reflect on you know where to from here uh, as the Azanian People's Organization. Uh, but before we get to the meat of things, um, you know just a brief, a brief background about each of these comrades, um, especially those who have not been on this platform before. A comrade Kurufero Mashavel grew up in uh, Purukwan. Um, he went to the University of the North, which we now know as the uh, University of Limpopo. Uh, he was one of the founder members of the Azanian Students Movement and uh, served in various cap uh, capacities uh, in Azapo. Uh, including being the, uh, you know, the Mpopo Provincial Political Commissar, and that is the position that he presently occupies in the province of Limpopo. He has worked as a lecturer at Tesekukune College of Education in the 80s and 90s, and uh, the last uh, professional post he held was that of a principal at Maibe Primary School until uh, 2009. And he decided to, to retire from active um, uh, teaching. And he has published several articles in newspapers and also worked as a research writer for the Electoral Institute of Southern Africa between the years uh, 2004 and 2009, publishing more than um, uh, 10 articles in their journal. Welcome, Kumwete Mashabela, to this platform. Is one of the, the few amongst us uh, who has uh, the opportunity of uh, you know seeing and chatting to Abraham Kokosetiro before he was murdered by the system. Comrade Chris Wepu is um, the son of the movement, and uh, having joined uh, you know the organization that could have founded as an incidence movement, and he grew up in the movement and 
Some of you would remember him when he was the Secretary General of the Azanian Students Convention when he was studying law at the University of the Western Cape and he moved on to work at the Department of Education. And from there, he moved to become the Chief Executive Officer, CEO of the Pan South African Language Board, Pan South. Is it Pan South? Yes, it is. And um, you know, from then on, he, he left uh, that portfolio into the private sector where he is doing consulting work um, as, and he has a foundation which, by the way, is uh, named after him, Chris Wepo Foundation, which does a lot of work, uh, charity work uh, in the Eastern Cape. Uh, he does um, a lot in the education sector where he spent a bit of time uh, working with, uh, you know, schools uh, on capacity building and other programs. And he, he is um, SJN consulting firm, does a lot of work in the capacity building space and that's where he is at the present moment. And uh, Comrade Kakala Sohena is uh, a person who's been running this program with us uh, for the last couple of months. So I'm not going to be waste more of your time uh, reintroducing her to her own platform and to yourself so you know who she is so let's let's get going and uh, talk about uh, what we are here to listen to and what we're here to to talk about you know just some reflections on uh, what we have seen in the last uh, you know couple of days as as you know you know, the Azanian People's Organization went into, into this election campaign. And, um, you know, I think it uh, registered to participate at about 42 municipal council elections uh, out of the more than uh, 256 councils that were contested uh, countrywide. And Azapo chose to participate at these, uh, at these 42. And uh, out of that campaign, uh, I think it came back with, uh, with two seats. One at, um, is it Fetahomo in Limpopo, and the other one was the Rand West uh, municipality in, in the Gauteng province. And, uh, and by all uh, standards, uh, that is not the kind of performance uh, that can be expected uh, of an organization of the magnitude of the Azanian People's Organization. And it is fair to say that uh, we, we did not perform as, as, you know, as expected. And we are here to reflect on that and, uh, you know, begin to decipher what that means, uh, you know, uh, for Zanian People's Organization and what that means for Black people in this country and what that means, uh, you know, for us as, as we move forward. And perhaps we can start uh, with the comrade Mashabela giving us his perspectives and views on what he has seen and, uh, what we should think about it. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon to you all, our facilitator, Comrade Kasha, my fellow com panelists, uh, Comrade Chris Swipu and Comrade Kekele Zokena, and all members of the audience listening and watching from various channels. Right, our topic today, Kuovadis uh, Azapo Reflections, comes against the backdrop of the LGE elections that took place on Monday, November 1, 2021. As has been said, we did not perform very well in those elections. Now, one of the reasons being that uh, we did not do a sufficient preparation for the elections. Uh, and when you look at it, at it uh, uh, globally, you will realize that uh, almost all the parties that uh, took part in those elections did not have uh, enough time to prepare, especially because at some point we thought the elections were going to be in February next year. But that having said, uh, there are certain things that we'd like to look at and see uh, how um, our lack of preparation and other things led to where we are. Another significant development from the most recent uh, elections is, the, is what I call 
the elected vote by 70% of eligible voters who chose to stay away from the polls. While they just passed elections on the backdrop of this organization, of this uh, conversation, there are also other things that are, we are going to look at, like uh, the efficiency paradigm of our administrative structures, uh, the relevance of uh, our price documents to the unfolding future that is influenced by developments that we could not think of when this were drawn. The balls that we dropped as an organization as we traverse the early 21st century and so on and so on. That will be the things that I'd like to look at from my perspective, uh, excluding what uh, the other panelists would like to look at. Right, as panelists, these are some of the things and more that we'll be talking to. However, we request 100% engagement from the audience so that the pointers that come out of this conversation can be strong enough to help transport black people to where they belong, higher than the mountain tops. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Comrade uh, Mashavela, uh, for your introductory um, comments and, and remarks. Uh, you know, with regards to you know your views uh, on on the past elections, and it would be interesting to hear what Comrade uh, Swepu says. Um, you know, to the fact that uh, seventy percent of uh, you know the electorate chose uh, not to uh, you, know, you know participate. In this election, and I'm not too sure whether it is correct to say they chose not to participate because, you know, abstention is part of participation in an election. When you are not happy with what you see, and you may choose uh, you know, to false, and you may choose, and some you may call it a negative vote, um, you know, participation uh, by abstaining from the election instead of uh, you know giving it away to people that. Um, you, you do not have uh, trust for. I don't know, Comrade Swepu, what do you think? Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Simpiwe, and to the fellow panelists and all participants in this platform. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and for inviting me to share my own views. Uh, I would like to start by uh, wishing uh, well and good health to one of the leaders of the Azanian Shimurenga, uh, Combat Andile Mudama, who has taken ill. Uh, we wish him well from this platform. Uh, I've spoken to him last night. He's recovering very well. Um, I thought I should dispatch with that, Combat Simbiwe. Uh, well, I look at these elections perhaps differently uh, from many people out there. Um, I feel that the Azapo message has resonated with the electorate. Uh, there are two ways we could look at election results. We look at them from the numerical perspective. And from the numerical perspective, perhaps we did not do well, which is something I would argue later we ought to have expected. But from the content of elections, I think we are one party that has won uh, uh, in these elections, Combat Simpiwe. We went into these elections with a message that people needed to take back their power. Now, precisely, uh, not registering uh, uh, was one way of our people saying we have had enough whether you agree with the strategy or not, uh, it's something else. Not voting even when you have registered is one way our people said this is enough. We are tired of people who promise us jobs, the job now brigade, our people rejected that. They rejected the brigade that said we govern better where we govern. They rejected the myth of renewal when you are so bloated with corruption, all these movements, not voting, not registering, 
and voting such that 60 municipalities are hung municipalities. Our people threw back uh, uh, the, this problem to the, to the thieves and said, here yeah, is a crisis in your hands, we're giving in, it unto you. So I think, Comrade uh, Simpiwe, we, we should be proud of the message we, we, we gave out there. Uh, that our people must take back their power. This is precisely what they have done. Our message has resonated with them. I am quite happy. Um, uh, it is up to us to educate people to, uh, to vote, but we must also accept that what political parties, uh, particularly the ruling elite, have done in this country in terms of corruption, lack of service delivery, is precisely what has placed us where we are, we cannot be blaming our people. They have taken back their power as per our message, and we should be quite happy with how people are revolting against the vultures uh, that are governing this country. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Comrade uh, Chris, uh, for, for those uh, remarks and uh, quite interesting that has up, uh, you know, um, campaigned on the uh, the ticket of take back your power. Um, and that is the, the message that Kumut uh, Chris uh, believes it resonated uh, very well with the with the black people out there. But, you know, the question is, if that was um, the, the, the perspective and the view, and if that is the feeling that that message resonated well with the, um, you know, black electorate, which is the target for Azanian People's Organization, why is it then, Gagales, that Azapo came back with two seeds? It, it doesn't make sense, does it? No, absolutely not, uh, comrades in Pue. Uh, but firstly, let me uh, take the opportunity to say thank you so much for inviting me as a guest on our platform. Um, I'm truly honored to be sharing this conversation with um, people that I admire incredibly. Um, so, you know, uh, <laughs> having just managed 13,573 votes uh, from millions of voters who did go out to vote, the picture looks bleak for me. Um, I also saw a percentage growth in six of the nine provinces, in, including Gauteng. Um, and as you say, Comrade uh, Zimpiwe, uh, we went out with a slogan that says, take back your power. Um, and for me, it says, Azapo is always able to read the room. Azapo was able to discern the frustration of the people. Um, and Azapo will see that the people are, have lost faith in the system and that the system as it stands, it cannot and it does not have the capacity to change our people's lives. Now, academia has called it apathy, activists has called it disengagement, uh, as Apo calls it, taking back your power. But indeed, people did withhold their power. Um, however, as Apo's messaging was not loud enough because their messaging failed to reach uh, the people and create what we call brand association. So yes, you want to say, we told people to take their, their power, they did, but do people associate your slogan with Azapo? Where is the connection? So we continuously fail to make the connection with our messaging, our vision, our ability to diagnose the room um, with Azapo. The truth is Azapo has always been able to read the room. Azapo read the room when they said a non-racial South Africa uh, was a pipe dream. And they said that the uh, the settlement, the negotiated settlement, uh, spoke to integration, the assimilation of black people into white systems and white ways of being. They read the room when the uh, liberation movement sold out in the struggle to the true emancipation of our people and decided to boycott and reject the negotiated settlement in 1994, as well as in 1990, and as well as the elections in 1994. Azapo knew already in the 1990s. Uh, that the imposed compromise would eventually lead to the dissatisfaction and fragmentation of black unity. And that the going concern was in fact going to compromise the aspirations of our people and protect white privilege, uh, as well as their unfettered access to our resources and exclusive economic participation 
uh, making our people perpetual slaves and seekers of white salvation and acceptance. And yet, like today, they failed to communicate and sell their message to the masses. To this date, as Zappa continues to attract the interests of the intelligentsia, they continue to attract coffee table revolutionaries who write beautiful concept, tape, uh, concept papers that are inaccessible to the masses and have yet to translate to a tangible value for our people. It's not enough to read the room and do nothing to change the lives of our people. Azapo needs to do better. If we are going to have messaging um, that reads the room that says, this is how our people are feeling, then there must be a level where we actually create brand association with our messaging. I'll stop here for now. Wow. Brand association, uh, beautiful concept papers that we write. And uh, yet we're not able to translate this uh, into a message that can resonate with people. And yet Swepu says, you know, our message resonated uh, with our people. There's one aspect of this that all of you have not touched on. In as much as Azapo has been saying, take back your power, but he was also saying, restore your dignity. And to what extent do you then believe that, you know, taking that power and staying with that power with themselves has restored black people's dignity. Remember, restoration of dignity involves, um, you know, fighting for what uh, you know black people are suffering from. You know, poverty, uh, landlessness, um, you know, dilapidation. You know, you look at the streets we live. You look at the houses that people live at, and you look at uh, you know the myth, what you call the myth of renewal, and you look at where we come from in the last 27 and a half years and begin to say, was it really worth it? Can we consider this as part of, um, you know, the liberation effort, a benefit that um, has, uh, you know, been seen uh, to exist within the Black uh, community? Comrade Mashabel, how do you respond to this? Well, uh, I, I would say that uh, the, the second part of our messaging, uh, uh, restore your dignity, is something else that we need to work on. I think our people uh, may have understood that they have some power, which is why you, you see a lot of people having voted for independent candidates and so on and so on. But there are other things that need to be done to make sure that uh, as a people, we restore our dignity. Now, this will not uh, only just come through, through the electoral process. There are certain things that we need to do as an organization like Azapo in our communities to make sure that the dignity of our people is restored. And moving forward, this is what we need to focus on as Azapu, so that uh, the dignity of our people is restored through the things that we will teach them to do as the organic uh, intellectuals of the revolution. So we need to, to go out there and be side by side with our people so that we can help them restore their dignity. I think for now, this is uh, as much as I would see. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I see you, you, your hand is up. I don't know if you want to make a contribution to this. Yeah, I, I, I actually do. Um, Comrades and Piwe, you know, um, Azapwa is known as the organization of intelligent people. And in terms of being able to restore the dignity of our people, I feel like, uh, our intellectual ability to diagnose the challenges our people face must come with the intelligent solutions our people need for material change in, our, in, in you know, to restore the dignity of our people. The reality is that we do not need to be in power nor in parliament to make the difference in the lives of our people. We need the brain muscle that this organization is blessed with to come up with programs that will show people why black consciousness and its fundamental principles of self-reliance is the answer. We need to illustrate why Azato is the vehicle that helps us realize black dignity, justice, restoration, and equality. We must actually be prepared to get our hands dirty. 
We must be prepared to be part of the discourse that sets their agenda to challenge the status quo, either in law, through protests, or just plain active citizenry. We cannot be missing in action when our people need the strong voice I now know as I put to be. Now that means that we need to be part of communities, we need to be in communities, um, we need to be part of the solution, but we also need to be challenging the things that continue to strip our people of their dignity. But this requires us to stop intellectualizing the struggles of our people and actually get our hands dirty. Wow, uh, Comrade Swepo, then, uh, is it fair to say others may see this as a, as a distraction? I mean, these elections, uh, Azapo has been so consumed, uh, you know, with elections, um, you know, every, every term. Uh, we, we, we go into elections and we participate and we go, go full steam, and yet we are not uh, as active as we should be uh, in the communities, as Tekalesa says. Uh, wouldn't you say then, you know, these elections are um, but a distraction to a program towards true liberation and freedom for our people? They, 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 they can be coming to be because uh, as you hear from other uh, panelists, the call is to actually have that program. Uh, so you can't distract something that does not really exist. Uh, what, what we actually need, and I agree with uh, my fellow panelists, we need a coherent program that would ensure that we are champions of the people's struggle. Uh, the, the second part of our message, we ourselves did not expect uh, that uh, both messages would succeed. Uh, that people would take back their power and automatically move uh, uh, to Azabu. We have, we have a faith approach, uh, Combat Simpiwe. Uh, uh, those of us who sit in the war room acknowledged that we will succeed with the first part. We already knew that we will not succeed much with the second part, precisely for the reason that we have not been that involved with the people's struggles. Now, that is what we, we will be doing. That is what we will be doing. Our discussions are very advanced. Uh, we are going to deploy our teams into the communities and ensure that we participate in people's struggles. The other part is that we do urgently need to reinforce our leadership with vibrant and energetic uh, 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 leaders more useful uh, for that matter, who would be able to speak to communities out there. The youth, if you look at the youth at universities, the struggles there are, are struggles that are inspired by what we are saying, yet we are not there. Um, and, I'm, and I'm saying is that we are working on it, uh, Kobet Simpiwe, we, 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 we will get there. Our, our, our members are very resilient people and I want to salute them on this platform. Without any semblance of resources, they went out there to ensure that our name uh, uh, remains in the lips of our people. We now have an opportunity to say to ourselves and our people that we are available and to avail ourselves and, and champion their struggles. Combat Kegeletso is quite correct. Uh, that we need to be there and we don't need to focus on elections. Elections come after every five years. We have an opportunity to work with our people and I am part of a team that is working on that program to ensure that Azapo is ready to take over power in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Congress, you know, somebody will tell you that that is a tired refrain. You have been saying the same thing every five years. And every time you lose an election, you say, you know, we need to reboot, we need to uh, refocus and we are so correct. And yes, uh, you know, the stats are out there, you know, that reveal the correctness of, you know, your analysis as a Zappu. You know, you, some of the things that we see uh, are things that you said prior to this dispensation that, you know, people will reject the system. 
people will uh, see uh, no benefit coming out of uh, you know the myth of 1994. And here we are, we are seeing it, and yet uh, it is much saying now nah, the people are very resonant with that message, and yet that resonance does not translate itself to them seeing a ZAPO as a vehicle through which they can then propel their struggle forward. What yes. is to be done without you know, telling us about things that you've told us before? What is new that ZAPO needs to put on the table that has not been seen by yes. people? But let, let, let us start here, uh, Comrade Simpiwe. Uh, so, so that we never tire of, 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 of saying the same thing. Yeah. Uh, we, we have been preaching the take back your power for about 30 years now. Mm. It is only after uh, 20 odd years that people have actually taken back their power. Do you see how long it has taken for us preaching the same thing? That take back your power. And, and if we were to use the tiring approach we would, have, we would have tired and given up on our people. It took 30 years of us preaching the same thing, that in 2021, on the 4th of November, our people decided to take back their power. So in, in as much as it has taken that long, we also need to speak to our members as we are doing right now. It has taken long, but equally they will get there. We need activism. Uh, from them, we they must not rest on their laurels, and I think with the with the much that we have done after the fourth, uh, in terms of our planning and 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 speaking to our members, um, reading them the riot act, I think we will get there. Uh, it has taken thirty years for our people to take back their power. As other members will also uh, get there. Uh, uh, I, I am uh, very hopeful. I'm not just hopeful, it's because I am part of a team that is working on this. That's why I'm very <laughs> optimistic. We will get there. Uh, we, we shall, we, we shall we, get we there. Get there. Uh, he says we shall get there. And you are saying, you know, uh, what you have seen, what you have observed is that we are very good at analysis. And which is why we are finding, uh, you know, the correctness of our views and the correctness of our analysis, uh, you know, coming into reality now, and people beginning to see what you saw and what you said, and yet you 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 saying we are very good, and and I suppose that's where it comes from, you know, the beautiful concept papers that we develop, and yet yeah. we don't see much of these people who are developing these papers, dead in their hands, uh, working with communities. And what is, going, what is going to change now? And how is that going to change? Um, Comrades and viewers, I think we have to be honest with ourselves here. Um, it's said that doing the same thing repeatedly and expecting a different result is madness. We've been doing this for as long as we have been doing this. It's not working. What we have been doing has not managed to create brand association. Nobody sees Azapo as the vehicle that will emancipate our people. That's our problem. We are not in the minds of our people. You are saying we went out with a slogan that is that reflects the issues of our people, that reflects the feelings of our people. Yet there is no brand association, something simple. After the elections, we could have gotten online and said, Azapo has said, this is not going to work. This is what is happening. We should have been in the media talking about that and saying, we've been saying this for many, many years. Our people have confirmed it. We could have literally taken that hashtag that says, take back your power and associate it with the lack of voting. I mean, we really could have um, from the get go as this was happening, being online and started associating brand Azapo with this messaging. The messaging is out there, but nobody associates it with us. We cannot continue going that way. So it's not working. Now, we need to change how we are communicating. You know, somebody will tell you that Azapo's uh, brand has been anchored on black consciousness. And somebody will also tell you that, you know, just about every young person in this country which is black consciousness. And look at you know, the brand black consciousness as a philosophical framework that a lot of people growing up 
are beginning to embrace and believe in. Why are you then saying, uh, you know, as opposed, uh, you know, custodianship to black consciousness does not have a brand? No, 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 I'm not saying that you don't. I am saying you are not creating the linkages. What you need to do is create a link. You need to show people that black consciousness is as up or the vehicle that will ensure that people um, realize black dignity is as up or the vehicle that will ensure that young people know that being black and proud is the way of living. It's a, it's a way of being, it is the only way that we can restore ourselves, that we can restore our communities, that we can change the lives of our people. And that as up holds the message that says, we cannot continue to disregard black people. We cannot continue assuming that this whole notion of integration is working. It is not working for our people. And our people are saying this. So now Zappo needs to take the message of our people and actualize it, challenge government, challenge the legal systems, and actually challenge government through the legal systems and go into communities and fight. Like for instance, how are we finding ourselves living in squalor? It is anti-black to live like pigs. This is not who we are. And Azapa needs to be in there to remind people what it means to be black, the pride that comes with being black. And Azapa needs to associate itself with all of those things. There needs to be a relationship between the brand Azapa and black consciousness and changing the lives of our people. It needs to happen on the ground. Mm. What do you say to this? Yeah, I think I, I'd like to concur with uh, my fellow panelists, but what I'd also like to add is that uh, the muscle that has been spoken about, the intellectual muscle especially, has not been put to very good use. You know, for instance, um, if you look at uh, our organizations, if I just count off my hands, you have uh, so many legal experts at various uh, levels of experience. These are people who should be uh, uh, maybe galvanized into drawing laws that will make uh, black people advance to where they are supposed to be. If we look at our data as it was being uh, put into practice, you know, the legal system was uh, used in order to entrench apartheid so that it works against black people. So with the type of muscle that we have, we should be doing much more for our people to make sure that even when we are not in parliament, the laws that we promulgate get to be discussed in parliament. The other thing is that uh, most of us here are learned in things like research and so on and so on, but we, we never go out to do research on the things that uh, affect black people. You know, research always validates the things or the strategies that people have to put into practice. Now that is the muscle that my panelists, my fellow panelists speak about, which has not been put in uh, to, to, to proper use. And there's still, besides these two examples, there's still much more that we can speak about that uh, has not been put to great use in the service of our people. <laughs> All right, we are in conversation with uh, Comrade uh, Kulu Fellow Mashabela, Comrade Kekale Sohena, and uh, Comrade uh, Christopher Suepo, and they are doing there are reflections on the Azapo's uh, participation in the last uh, election, local government elections of November 1, and also um, reflecting on you know, the action plan, what, you know, what, what needs to be done and where, where to from here. Please join us in this conversation as, as we navigate this space. And uh, you can do so by uh, dropping your comments and messages on the Q&A tab. And you can also do so on the chat as well as uh, raising your hand and uh, make a contribution. And others are making their contributions to our Facebook platforms of uh, Azapo, Azapo Eastern Cape, Azapo Limpopo, and Azapo Gauteng. And I see um, a hand from um, uh, Dungelo Kekia. And I also saw a hand from uh, Som Daga. So, can we start with uh, Lungelo and then uh, Somdata? 
Um, thank you, thank you very much, Comrade Jashe. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to the panelists as well, and um, good afternoon to the to the others that are also participant in this um, platform. Firstly, I would like to um, to thank Azapo. In fact, I've been following um, most of uh, post um, elections. No other organization has come to the public uh, as Azapo has done to analyze itself in public as it does in this platform. It's, it's, a, it's, it's that this is in itself an indication of the level of maturity and the level of um, commitment to its people. All, all, all other organizations are now doing, uh, if indeed they are doing their analysis, they are doing it outside. Uh, this platform because the name does say Azanian People's Organization. So the, the, the analysis is done, this platform is a people's platform and it is done um, within this team. That therefore speaks to it, um, as one of the panelists said, it's, it's intellectual ability. Uh, it's, a, it's a good analysis to analyze yourselves in the midst of the very people that uh, you, seek to, you seek to liberate. And therefore, it's a sign of, of maturity, which actually indicates um, that indeed um, 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 theory is indeed as an objective to, to practice. So that's, that's the first thing I want to, confer, um, to congratulate Azapo for coming up and analyzing itself uh, in, the, in, the, in the public. But I do also want to um, um, go towards agreeing with Comrade Keke so there that the, the linkage, indeed it's correct. People have taken their power and it has taken this long to, to, to what Comrade Swip is saying, to take back their power. But I think Azapo also does need to work on the linkages as what uh, Comrade Kekes has said there, that uh, 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 its message or the, the, its genuine message that it is doing now, to, it, it must be seen to be that of Azapo. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I do believe personally, in my own personal view, that Azapo has got that uh, ability as it is its members. It's probably the only organization that has got uh, resilient members which have, which have basically nothing uh, except its belief to, 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 um, to, to carry it on. So I think we, Azapo needs to work on its linkages and one of the ways to do so we can't, we can't, um, Azapo can't dismiss the importance of leadership. Perhaps a youthful leadership um, is more important to start with, uh, both at the national and the provincial level. It is my, it is my um, proposal, Azapo, to relook really into youthful leadership, vibrant leadership. Uh, there's a lot it can learn from other organizations. I've seen another organization that has um, three mayoral um, candidates. One is 34 years, the other one recently one year. Um, so Azabu can learn in, uh, in, in, um, in that of bringing youthful leadership. That's, that's my contribution, it's just the issue of youthful leadership. And lastly, it's um, commend it for, for analyzing itself in the midst of the people. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, thank you, Lengelo. Uh, Sontaka? <clears throat> Uh, thanks, Comrade Ashe. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, greetings to the, the panel. <clears throat> um, my, my biggest critic uh, in our campaign <clears throat> in these um, recent local government elections was the absence of brand ambassadors, senior brand ambassadors. In this case, I refer to his senior, to our, to our national leadership. I mean, we've seen our organizations, you know, the president, the deputy, you know, um, key were upfront, you know, you know, engaging, you know, communities door to door on media everywhere. And our leadership was nowhere to be seen. I don't remember in this uh, recent uh, local government election seeing a president of Azapo on a national television or a national radio station or in a newspaper. 
So, so now I'm, I'm of the view that this also contributed, um, um, you know, to our perfor- poor performance, you know, by Azabo. So, so the leadership uh, was just on mute. We were nowhere to be seen. So that, that was my biggest, you know, uh, observation in this. And it was for the first time that in leadership, um, in, in, in national leadership, that, you know, you don't see, you know, campaigning, you know, engaging different communities. So that, that is my, 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 my small contribution. Uh, thank you, uh, Somdaka. And I see uh, Zamile Sinuka, if you can, where is he now? Comrade. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Comrade. And uh, thank you to the panelists also for the great analysis. Uh, as an organization, we, we, we must also be reflective of the fact that in 1994, we said to people, we are boycotting elections because they're not going to bring anything that is going to cause change. And if you look into the voter register uh, 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 role, voters role, the number of people who cast or the percentage who casted the vote, we will see that there's a quite a great percentage of people who are responding to our 1994 position. And they say, what is the matter of voting? because this is not going to bring any change, which means in a, in a way they are responding to the correct call of 1994, but at a wrong time. And as Azapa, we need to go back to the, our communities and, and, and uh, make them to understand that uh, if the current government is failing to deliver, our call was correct, but the timing now, we are moving in this path. Uh, the other thing we, we need not to be uh, uh, confined in a way in terms of our pre, uh, pre-democracy situation politics. What do I mean by that? Uh, we were too much concerned of uh, class suicide. We were concerned of being a workerist uh, organization in orientation. And we need to read the electorate. If the electorate, we say this is uh, comrade Chris who, who has this profile and so on, uh, people may not be really understanding what Chris Swepu is saying, but they may follow the profile. and how we profile ourselves when we enter into election. We fear to be seen as a petty bourgeoisie. We fear to be seen as people of elite group. We were so um, uh, 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 humiliated by other organizations as an organization of intellectuals, as if there's something wrong with being intellectual. And in a way, Azapo is succumbing to that. And when we profile our candidates, we need not to fear to, to indicate uh, their academic profiles, their intellectuality, and so on. Because some other people may be impressed on that. And Azapo is not uh, playing that trick, whereas it has quite a great human resource in, in its disposal to do so. Yeah, the, the other thing is, is a program that we are operating as in loose forces. We don't have a comprehensive program, which is followed by national to say, at this time, this is what all branches will do. At this time, this is what all will be doing. And, and, and we don't see the national leadership in some level supporting region branches and other structures. I, I happened in my, in, my, in my work to be working around Dispatch, Kwanokolo, and Yudni. Kwanokolo, I visited one school. People were in a hurry because uh, Tulasnes was going to address them in that one. 
not in the whole area, in a while, coming from wherever he's coming from to come and address the people in the ward, assisting a ward council candidate. So we, 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 we need to develop such strategies. And I think there is no organization in this country that has a better analysis and a better view of what must happen in this country except us. But we are not using the potential that we have. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Comrade uh, Sunuka. And a couple of comments from Facebook. One is um, uh, from um, Bumelelo Bangegachi um, was saying, Azako just needs to be unashamedly Black consciousness and um, disruptive in her approach to this neo-colonial and neoliberal state and be willing to put its message out there without fear of criticism. And yes, Beth Muyaha saying we need to resuscitate the community health programs, advisory centers, the student study um, uh, projects, and many community-based uh, projects. And to me, also a good introspection. And uh, here's uh, Wingim Nubisa asking the question, can the panelists explain why other Black revolutionaries are anti-election politics and believe that we cannot attain freedom through uh, elections? And uh, also questioning that you should concentrate on rural areas as where uh, Azapo seems uh, is seen to be lacking, um, you know, the most. And some piece, Kodide uh, Gampemba uh, says, I think uh, PR branding and marketing from the neoliberal perspective can be misleading. Azapo is a national liberation movement and its constituency is uh, black people. Therefore, its reason for existence transcends crude uh, electro uh, electrocracy, as Apple must simply reclaim its status as a fighting champion of Black people. Who is fighting on behalf of Black people today? Who? It, it is also important to clarify what we mean by our people's struggles. Who exactly are our people? The DA also uses the formulation of our people. Lastly, have the goals of national liberation been achieved? In my view, this question is what is fundamental to the existence of Azapo. And um, here's Beth Muya saying the current political uh, environment which created dependency syndrome has crippled our youth. How will we influence uh, and win the student community which is attracted by materials and uh, alcohol consumption? And um, here's um, uh, Tabza saying my towers, I remember the Azap of old, of Kumri Mugai, Mundumia Zain, Srini Mudli, Amazimzim. And the PAC and Azapo need to return to the center of political mainstream. Azapo was unfortunately demobilized by the of its leadership into government and private sector. How do you respond to all of these comments and the comments that have been made by the towers who've just spoken? Let's start with, uh, with uh, Kulu and then Chris and then Kekeletsu. Yeah, thank you, Comrade Simpue. Now, going to to, to the issue of electoral politics. Uh, there is so much that we can achieve through electoral politics, but uh, that doesn't mean we should uh, negate the electoral politics. Now the electoral politics can help us, can help put us in the minds of our people and uh, also in the conscience of our people. So that it is important to go there, but we, we need to know that uh, the electoral politics, as uh, defined by the Codessa settlement, will not bring us to a free Azania. So that we need to use both the electoral politics on the one hand and other forms of mobilization on the other to make sure that we reach uh, the free Azania that we all EN form. Now I'd like to make an example of what happened in Ireland. You know, in Ireland, you had the Irish Republican Army, which was fighting the armed struggle on behalf of the Irish people. But they still had a, a parliamentary force in, a, in, in their parliament in the form of, of Sinn Féin. And when these things uh, were coordinated, they were able to advance the cause of the Irish people. I don't know what the, the situation is now, but back in those days in the 80s, you could see that uh, this dual strategy was working for the Irish people. 
So that is my response on what we need to do about electoral politics now. We need to know their limitations, but we don't have to abandon them. And we need to know their, their limitations so that we can do other things outside of the, of the uh, electoral politics. One thing that I think we need to be looking at as a example is to go back to that concept of a, a constituent assembly. We need to have a constituent assembly of the people that will work on a, a constitution that speaks to the people of Azania, not the one that we have now where certain things can be advanced through stealth, you know, just an example of things that can be uh, advanced through stealth. You, you just wake up one morning to, to find a minister of health saying that uh, your 12 year old child is matured enough to take uh, themselves to a vaccination center or an abortion center and have all those things that are done there, done to them without you as a parent knowing. Now, those are the type of things, as an example, those are the type of things that uh, proceed through stealth in our constitution that we need to replace with a constitution that speaks to what is going on in the conscience and in the souls of our people. Yeah, I think for now I go that far. Uh, thank you, uh, Sweku. Thank you, Comrade Simpiwe. I, I think generally I, I take the, 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 the comments uh, uh, that uh, have been made by the viewers um, around the need to have a coherent program uh, that is monitored across the country uh, so that when there is a campaign, everybody reports on that particular campaign, everybody participates in that campaign uh, at, at, the, at the same time. That's the coherence that we, 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 we must build. Um, and with that comes the reinforcement of leadership uh, that we have uh, spoken about. And yes, we need to be clear that we are talking about black people here. I think Veli is reminding us that it must not escape us that we are an organization of black people and it is black people that are struggling in this country. Um, and, and therefore we must be very clear in, 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 in what we, we say. I, I do want to say uh, that, and this may appear a contradiction, uh, that in terms of what our mandate is, our vision is as an organization, uh, not performing in elections in terms of numbers should not always mean a crisis. Uh, it should not always mean a crisis. There are quite a lot of the, the, the most effective Africana organization, not the DA of Tom Fran Plus, uh, in the development of Africana. It is Afri Forum that is not even contesting elections. So there's quite a lot we can do outside the electoral process, but it doesn't mean we must abandon it. Um, and it is also not a, a measure of uh, success necessarily. And, and we need to keep that in mind. And we can have all these things that we are talking about. If we are not involved with the struggles of our people, which is black people, we are not going to go anywhere. The highest form of um, uh, 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 marketing our brand is being part of the struggles of our people. Uh, that is why I wasn't expecting much votes because over the past five years, we were not that vocal, we were nowhere to be seen in the struggles of our people. This is fundamentally for me, what we need to address. Azapo must be involved with the people. Everything else shall follow. Mm. Everything else shall follow uh, once you have engaged and uh, dirtied your hands. Uh, Thank you so much. Um, so I want to talk about campaigning. Um, I, I, you know, there's this notion that campaigning is something that you do before an election. That's not how it works. 
You need to be in the minds of the people every single day. So we cannot leave campaigning to the last three months before the election and then come back and say, oh, no, it didn't quite work. What we should have been doing is campaigning every single day. And what that means is that we need to be with our people, as Comrade Swepu uh, aptly puts it. Um, campaigning for us is being able to actively demonstrate the effects of Black consciousness, to show people, to show Black we're men and women, um, that, you know, what does it mean? Black consciousness is about self-love. If you love yourself, you carry yourself with dignity. You live with dignity. We, we have to undo the effects of Project Apartheid. Project Apartheid was primarily about the dehumanization of Black people. That project has not ended. The dehumanization of our people continues. Black consciousness is the answer to the dehumanization of our people. The restoration of black pride and black dignity is black consciousness. And that is what Azapo has been tasked with doing. And Azapo needs to actually lead, um, move and lead that movement. Steve Biko says, black man, you are on your own. No one is coming to save us. We actually don't need saving. We are capable, we are ingenious, we are innovative, we are hardworking. Black consciousness can remind our people that we were not always slaves and beggars. We need to go back into communities, encourage young people to remember that Steve Biko says we must be self-reliant. When someone says in the media, jobs, I'm like, where are you asking those jobs from? Are you asking the white people to provide jobs for your people? That is completely unacceptable. We need to be self-reliant. And what that calls us on doing is for us to be innovative, to encourage young people to be the solutions in their communities. As an entrepreneur, my whole idea is wherever there is a problem, there is a profit to be made. We have too many problems in this country. So the use of our Zappo must be the solution. They must be the entrepreneurs and the solutions that change the lives of our people in material ways. So that speaks to how we engage young people and also how we change communities in ways that actually matter for our people. It's also quite important to remember that, yes, in as much as we are saying, uh, you know, in, 1990, in the 90s, when, when we boycotted the whole negotiated settlement, understanding what it meant for our people in the long term, understanding that we were being set up, the current constitution was never going to liberate black people. It was designed to protect the interests of white people. We knew this, we diagnosed it, we then decided we were not going to participate. But the reality of the situation is that the majority have since accepted that electoral uh, politics are the way to go. So we need to go there. But now we do have an opportunity. Listen to this. We do have an opportunity. We need to find that section of our people that is despondent. Give them hope. Show them what is possible under the umbrella of the Azapo brand. And whilst we edit, teach them what it means to take back your power using the electoral system so that these people can then start voting for us. We have massive opportunity to reposition as up in the minds of our people, but also within the electoral space by taking back the the votes of people who are frustrated. Go to them, solve their problems so that they can see what it how easy it is to solve problems because we are intellectually we have the intellectual capacity to solve problems. Let's use that to solve our people's problems. And then our people will reward us with the ability to go into parliament and change the laws that create problems for our people. There are so many laws that are apartheid laws that still sit in parliament because we are not there to change them. So it's quite important that we are part of that elective process so that we can go into parliament and change these laws uh, and repeal these laws that are anti-black. Thank you. Uh, thanks, and uh, that's that's a mouthful calculator. But you know, uh, somebody will tell you that I don't need brand as apple to achieve what you just stated. Uh, I just need brand black consciousness. And if I do all of those things, and um, you know, under you know the the pretext of saying, well, I am a busy person, and I can do that via you know face must fall. I can do that via uh, you know arise black men. I can do that via any other. A platform or entity that is out there, as long as I embrace the philosophy of black consciousness and I engage in community struggles 
through any other agency other than Azapo because brand Azapo is, you know, valueless to me. Value is elsewhere. How do you then change the narrative of the 70% of those people who have not seen the brand Azapo and who do not believe in brand Azapo, but believe in brand black consciousness? Uh, you see, the whole ethos of Black consciousness is Black unity. The fragmentation of Black consciousness, or people who claim to be Black conscious, and yet are defragmented and do not want to find themselves in a space where we are united. Remember, Imbumba is what gives us strength. In our isolation, we are easily um, uh, uh, destroyed. It is so important that uh, Azapo is in the forefront of creating this thing that we need, which is black unity. Fragmented blackness is what apartheid uh, wanted to do. And they have successfully done it. They have created social structures that don't really exist. We do not have a black middle class. We have black people who are now protecting the interests and the politics of white people just because they live in Midrand and they have a BMW. That is apartheid, that's project apartheid. So it's important for us to come back and show black people that the defragmentation of the fragmentation of black people is what is creating the problems we have today. The unity of black people is under the umbrella of the Azanian people's organizations. And it is critical that we begin to go into the public with the message of saying, if you are black conscious, you are not about the South because this whole thing of black people wanting to be a president, speaks to not knowing yourself as a black conscious person. Black consciousness is not about power. We are not about individual power. We are about the collective power. We are about the liberation of our people, the collectiveness of blackness and black people. That's what we are about. I don't care about leadership. I really want to be doing the work. So if you care about your people, you will put that aside and get your hands dirty so that we can liberate our people and change their material well-being. Wow. So, yeah, thank you, Nothing. Comrade Sim. Comrade Sim, just to pick up on what uh, Comrade KK Lester has been saying. Okay. You know, uh, the issue of Black solidarity is very important. So, it's incumbent upon us as Azabu to look for all those people who say they believe in Black consciousness, work uh, together with them. To, to, to achieve what is it that black consciousness wants us to achieve. Now, we should not even worry if those people do not want to join us. The important thing here is not that we become one big monolith. The important thing is that uh, as we step forward towards a free Azania, as the black consciousness forces, we move in tandem with each other. That is what is important here. Uh, let's say, for instance, for, for, for a while, forget about the need to become a, a uniform organization, but let us try to become a united force that marches forward uh, uh, in tandem with each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Swepo. Thank you, Comrade Simpiwe. It is important uh, uh, to, uh, to note that uh, uh, it is not Azapo. Uh, our people have not re rejected Azapo uh, because you, you would then have to say, having rejected the settlement, having uh, created the crisis, uh, that they have created in the Hang municipalities, who did they who did they choose as an alternative? They chose no one. They chose no one. No other black consciousness organization. No other pan Africanist organization. Our people are disgruntled with quality. So what we need to do is to position ourselves as as, as a credible champion. Of, of people's struggles and give back credibility to politics. Uh, so I don't see it as a rejection of Azapu. I see it as a general rejection of politics uh, because of what uh, the thieves have done in this country. People have rebelled and rejected 
everything that is that that is that that, that is politics. So Azapo need not be despondent and think that this is a rejection of Azapo, but rather a general rejection uh, of, of political parties by our people. And we need to work very hard to ensure that we are the, the, this alternative in this country. And, 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 and that we will do by involving ourselves with the struggles of our people. I agree with uh, my fellow panelists that it is important that we work on the unity of the, not only the black consciousness forces, but the forces of the left. So we need to speak to fraternal organizations and ensure that we work together. We don't need to be one organization. Gobit Kulu is right. We don't need necessarily to be one organization, uh, but we need to work together. Um, mm -hmm. if, 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 if we unite and become one organization, well and good, but we need to be able to collaborate with other organization. I'll, I'll give you a simple example. As I was done that very successfully uh, uh, recently, we invited all other organizations when we were campaigning for the release of the King of Abatim. We did not claim that campaign to ourselves. We worked with taxi people, churches, different organizations, and we, and we ran that campaign and the mission was accomplished. So we can do that with many other uh, activities that we that we are involved in, and um, we need leaders like yourselves, in Huey, uh, 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 to rise up, take leadership positions, and drive uh, 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 this vehicle called Azap. Mm. No, thanks, Comrade uh, uh, for for that and the challenges that you put to some of us. And uh, yes, the Sikhom is saying, you know. The issue on branding cannot be overemphasized. It absolutely, it's absolutely critical. One of our biggest problem uh, is that we have more technocrats than uh, full-time party workers and your everyday foot soldiers, Azapo, also needs to focus on daily community struggles. You know, effective, effectively agreeing with you uh, on this, uh, focusing on service delivery governance and intervening on behalf of Taxpayers, citizens, and ratepayers. And yes, the county Balenot over saying, I agree with uh, Comrade Lisiko Mukhots and Comrade Chris Wepu. Branding is everything in the epoch of 4IR. And uh, we need um, indeed technocrats, skilled personnel to take us up to where she should be. And Comrade um, uh, Simpiwe, Azapo has an overabundance of talented and skilled comrades who can be brought on board. We need to agree on the Azapo we need. And as I put anchored on the you know tenants um, eloquently expressed by Comrade Siskegaras Ochena, we need people like her with such refreshing ideas. We need to inject life into Azapo by embracing the new energy brought by the generation of Siskegaras Ochena. And uh, here's uh, Mulane Muja asking, what are the views of the panelists about unit? uniting black conscious uh, movement around Azapo as a flag bearer of uh, the BCM. And uh, he has not about, again, coming back asking, can the panelists uh, elaborate on the tenets of the Azapo we want in this epoch uh, and in this epoch of electoral politics? And uh, what are these uh, tenets that, uh, uh, you know, Azapo should be known for, uh, Comrade Kekeles? Um, look, you know, I just want to quickly go on the issue of technology and for IR. I was speaking to a young person just yesterday and saying to them, the fourth industrial revolution is upon us. And the politics of fourth industrial revolutions are also upon us. Our inability as black people to be part of the discourse and to be part of the programs is going to be a challenge. Right now, when people talk about who is writing code, who is writing uh, the, the systems that are informing for IR, we know that these are white men. We have had the struggles of anti-black sentiment, global anti-black sentiment um, since time immemorial. 
That is now taking place in the digital space. And we are not seeing enough of a voice or a strategy that is coming from black consciousness movements that says, we need to ensure that young black people are in the space of writing code so that we can ensure that these algorithms are not anti-black because we know that the system is anti-black. So we cannot ignore the, the effects of the fourth industrial revolutions as, and as black consciousness movements, it will be, it will be self-defeating if we think that we are going to run this movement or if we are going to continue to fight the issues of um, black dignity uh, without attacking issues of uh, technology and for AI. Um, I think it's quite important for us to understand that we are an organization that needs to be inside communities. There are certain things that are quite critical that are happening in our, pe in our people's lives today. Communities are dealing with issues of hunger, Communities are dealing with issues of drugs. We are dealing with issues of gender, gender-based violence, and a whole lot of other things. Azapo is nowhere to be seen. We are not part of the conversation. We are not driving the agenda. We are not coming up with solutions. In actual fact, we are missing in action. It is absolutely critical that we come out of this invigorated with the understanding that our people are looking to us as a solution. We have the intellectual ability to be able to come up with these solutions at community level. This is how you grow organizations. Azapo was not grown in the air. People would be brought in, educated, spoken to, encouraged, shown what BC is. We need to illustrate BC. Black consciousness, self-love, self-reliance. People must see it, feel it, live it, and associate it with us so that they can then believe in what it is that we can do for our people. Oh, wow, um, thanks, thanks for that. And uh, one would I it very strongly that, uh, you know, why is you saying we need to immerse ourselves in, um, you know, the struggles of the fourth industrial revolution, the majority of black people have not even seen the, you know, the third industrial revolution. They don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about the fourth industrial revolution. They're still grappling with issues around the third industrial revolution. And if you go to the rural areas and uh, you know, the majority of people um, have been grappling with issues of the third industrial revolution, but I think that's the subject for another day. I, I hear you with regards to um, you know, the fact that uh, people need to be listening uh, to Azabo and Azapo needs to be providing solutions, but Azapo needs to go there. And Azapo has not been seen in those communities. It is one thing to look for answers, you know, uh, you know, from you, but when you are not there, how then do you expect me to come to you as Azapo and say, well, I need a solution. I trust you. And how do you build that trust? And I think that is the, you know, the, the conversation that we need to have. How do you build that relationship with the communities and how do you ensure that I can trust you enough to believe in your ability to solve, your, solve my problems, not on the basis of your past, but on the basis of your present. Comrade Pagade wants to make a contribution. If you can unmute and uh, make your points, Tembele. Uh, am I audible enough now? Yes, you are. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, uh, the Chair and the panelists. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, the point I wanted to address myself to, I wanted to start this way. An army of lions led by a sheep will always be defeated by an army of sheep led by a lion. That's, what, that's where I wanted to start. I'm talking to the legacy institution that we have been left by our four years in the form of the Azanian People's Organization. That institution to me is left dilapidated. That institution is left without being painted like the guys who were there before the four years were there as they have left it. No improvements have been made. No work has been done on it. Uh, the current challenges relate to the fixation of us leadership with parliament and the culture of entitlement that goes with it. Because now if I want to be uh, the chairperson of the province, it's because I'm going to be the first to go to. 
And such things, I think, with time must be changed. Because now they affect our readiness to govern. Our readiness to govern is the problem here. Because now this uh, issue of readiness relates to the very vision. The visionary leadership is lacking at, the, at this point in time. We're lacking visionary leadership that can take us beyond here. Because now the issues relate to us understanding not just the liberation politics, but the, the parliamentary politics, even though I want us as part of that visionary leadership um, strategy to question everything around us, including the very constitution of this country, the, the best constitution in the world must be questioned. What are, what are its limitations in preventing freedom of our people from being attained? And what can be done? Because I'm making a point here that even if, even if it's a that takes over tomorrow, is given two thirds majority. It's going to be limited by that very constitution. And what is Azabo's constitution uh, uh, um, perspective? What is Azabo's attitude towards such things? Because now we have got 55% of people who have not voted, registered voters who have not voted. Why have they not voted? And part of that visionary leadership I'm talking about, what is our target market as Azabo? I just wanted to express myself there, comrades. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Chair. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Comrade uh, Stembele. Yes, uh, uh, Asan, that's what we're saying. You know, towers are often constrained financially when they have to commit to organizational programs. We have an attractor for a comprehensive financial sponsorship. Um, uh, and, and what is that uh, attractor? And what happens in the meantime when we have not overcome you know, this, this financial constraint? And yes, um, Kodidega uh, Mpemba saying, in my experience, the Azapo brand remains potent out there. And I'm not talking about voting. The problem is the people who have been put up front to advance and represent the Azapo brand in the last five years or so, who you put up as a face of Azapo can enhance or devalue brand Azapo. And here's uh, Matume Maponya saying, you know, there's a general positive feeling I hear here that Azapo needs to be part of the community and be involved in the community, not to try to, uh, to be visible towards elections. What I see missing in almost all black political organizations is that they have not clearly defined what must constitute a black community, what values must define a black community, what infrastructure is required to constitute a picture of a black community. We have communities emerging Squatter camps, township extensions, Azapo has an opportunity to define what a community must look and must look like, and then identify what role it can play in realizing such communities. There is a need for a blueprint that guides programs and contributions in communities. Um, so that, these are some of the contributions that we see on Facebook and uh, on the platform. And I'd like you to reflect on this as we move towards closure and, sub, as a, and, and I um, just request you to just respond to some of the comments that have come through and then um, uh, make your concluding remarks as you do so. Uh, comrade Kulu, if I may start with you. Oh, thank you, Comrade uh, Simpu. i just like to take up this, this issue of sponsorship. Now, um, you know, if you look at uh, the, the numbers of black people in this country, um, there are several millions of us, about 40 million of us. Now, uh, when everybody wants to start a business, they go into the black community, uh, put up a business there and milk up out all the money from the black community. Now, what we should be doing is not looking for sponsorship. We have the capacity to sponsor ourselves. If, for instance, uh, the 10 million, uh, the, 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 the 40 million people in the black community were to pop out 10 rand a year each, that would result in 400 million rands. And you know what we can do with that? We can. Uh, can even stage a coup d'etat tomorrow. Uh, I, I'm joking on that one, but uh, there's a lot that we can do 
with uh, what we have. We don't really need to go and look for sponsorship. We need to galvanize what we have into working for us. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Kuruma uh, Shabela, Comrade Chris Wepo. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Simpiwe. Um, they, there is hope out there. Uh, uh, people uh, fund programs. Once you have programs, then you will be funded. You need to have coherent programs and people will fund those programs. And, and just to enunciate that point, uh, ju just uh, last week, we started a campaign in our youth Nake branch having observed in the elections how dirty the township was. We started a campaign, we have started cleaning in all the areas that we had identified for campaigning purposes. We are going back there, we have started, we are cleaning the township and we have already attracted a major sponsor. That is just to show that people fund uh, programs. There is hope uh, for Azapo out there we have started in, 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 in some of the branches to turn things around. As I'm explaining to you, the program we have in Udney, we'll have many other programs. Azapo <coughs> needs to address all the issues that uh, the members have, have, uh, have indicated and the participants in, 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 in this program. Uh, I commit myself uh, uh, to be part of, of that change, to ensure that we have programs, we implement uh, programs. I think we should just all stand up and and, and be counted. No, thank you. Thank you, Comrade uh, Chris Weppo. Uh, Comrade uh, Gekalesa Faina, can you just close it off uh, for us? Yeah, thank you. Um, Comrade Swepo, we mentioned earlier AFI Forum. Uh, Conrad Koluma Shabela is talking about the same Afri Forum model. Um, the reality of the situation is when we start to be seen as a beacon of hope for our people, our people will financially support us. This is a fact, and I know that it is possible. So we need to start doing the work and the money will follow. That's issue number one for me. When we talk about how we define black uh, townships or, or black establishments or black places, of, of living. I think one of the things is, I keep saying that project apartheid is not over. Um, the squalor within which our people live is part of the dehumanization and the intergenerational trauma that our people experience. We can blame our people, but we also need to go back and find out where does it come from? We have been dehumanized. We cannot continue to pretend that we don't understand that apartheid was a psychological disease waged upon our people. We need to go back there and show, and, and show our people and start the healing process of the minds of our people. And which, like Comrade Swip was saying, they're actually starting to clean up the space. But merely cleaning up is one process. Re-educating the people to say, the one way to fight back the system is to fight for your own humanity refuse to live like this you have to refuse to live like this we have drugs in our communities i grew up in a community where oh mama was the next door was my mother and if i started taking drugs it would have been her problem that i was taking drugs now we live in societies where when we see young people on the streets dirty and unconscious it doesn't ring a bell that this is young Azania dying. The future of our children is dying. Drugs are being peddled in our streets with us there. It will take us up or going into the streets and turning those houses around, burning them to the ground if we have to. But it will take us up or doing drastic things to change communities. We need to define what those communities look like. Drugs are unacceptable. Dirt is unacceptable. Disease is unacceptable. We need to teach our people that they must respect themselves. They must love themselves. And in so doing, black, a black man, a young, proud black man does not do drugs. A young black man carries himself with pride and works hard for their living. We teach our people innovation. 
because we can. We have indigenous plants, we have indigenous fauna. We have so much that we can do and export and teach the world. We have cultural promotion that we can teach and export to the world. All of these things will restore the pride and dignity of our people. It will take us up of being able to think outside of the box. It's not just mere politics. It's restoring the soul of the black child. That is critical. If we can do that, we can begin to change everything. Because unless we change it here and we change it here for our people, everything we speak of, even if we give them money, and I'm telling you right now, if we give them land two years down the line, the white people will legitimately own that land. We need to heal our people and show them the right way. And black consciousness and Azapo is the answer. Well, thanks to my panelists, we need to heal our people. And what better way to heal our people than to remember why we exist as us? We do not exist for elections. We exist for the liberation of our people. And if we are despondent because of the losses that we suffered in the last election, we should have faith and hope in our ability as a, as a liberation movement. We should reflect back on the tenacity of this liberation movement and the achievements that it managed in the short space of time of its existence. And you know, remember that we exist for the liberation of our people and that the election programs are but part of a program and strategies and tactics that have to be deployed in the course of struggle. I thank you, my fellow panelists, and thank you everybody who managed to connect uh, this afternoon in this uh, sobering reflection. And I hope to connect with you again in the next um, week as we continue with this um, political education. And thank you for spending the afternoon with us. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, guys. Sure. Yeah.